when I, you know, I started feeling something was wrong and I went to the doctor and she gave me a pap smear. And that's when she found out that there was something going on. So she said, well, I'm gonna send you here. During the biopsy, they said stage two cancer, cervical cancer. And I said, wow, I know what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna pray, get rid of it and go on with my life. And and basically that's what I did. But other things started changing. I started kind of pushing away from my husband. And it wasn't normal for me to say no to him. And I started and I said, you know, something's wrong. And so after the cancer was taken care of and the treatments and everything, they said, you're cancer free. Then I said, okay, what am I going to do about this? So I talked to Dr. Lowry, who was my cancer doctor. And he said, well, we have an intimacy clinic. You want to go and see if they might be able to help you. And that's how I wound up seeing Dr. Hayes. It's so gratifying working with these patients because they come to me and they feel like they're, they're already grieving so much um, in regards to their cancer diagnosis. So whether it's uterine cancer, cervical cancer, breast cancer, or any other type of cancer um, can impact them emotionally and can impact their libidos. A cancer diagnosis may psychologically impact a patient. You know, the grief from the cancer diagnosis itself and how it can create a barrier between a patient and, and her partner. Being able to sit in front of her and just let my hair down, as they say, take your wig off and expose yourself. I was able to do that, and I wasn't able to do that with my husband. And it wasn't just a, a interview or a consultation. It was two women talking freely about the things that are going on in their body. You know, I was able to tell my husband other things. Well, how come I couldn't tell him that, you know, I'm not really interested in sex anymore. I just really like to open it up and really hear what the patient's saying, not just listen, but hear them. Um, you know, patients have so many different barriers that they have to their optimal sexual health and wellness. And so I really try to make them um, understand that I'm not judging them. I'm here to kind of mirror back to them what they're already telling me. It played a lot, you know, being able, like I said, talk to her. And she made me realize that I have a right to mourn. Just like a woman when she loses her breast. You have a right to mourn the loss. That was what I had to learn. I had to learn that. And I learned that also through her, but also my husband, because he had to reinforce. Those are the kind of talks that I needed to have with my husband. See, I needed the laughter. I needed to know that I was still attracted to him, even though he could see he couldn't see that, you know, I didn't have my fallopian tubes, my, my ovaries anymore. But he knew they were there and he knew what the purpose was because he knew they were a part of me. They're gone. And like I said, we have a right to mourn what we lose. Give us that. But then you can't stay there. You got to wake up because there's too much life out there for you. Mourn it, get over it, and say, hey, now what can I do to dress to make myself look good so that when I walk out that door, I'm looking good for somebody. I'm attracting somebody. I'm able to be more myself with my husband. And I enjoy that. You know, I enjoy that. The freedom to say, hey, come here. <laughs> uh, Meet me in the bedroom, <laughs> you know, things like that. Or being able to be myself again, like I was when I was younger. We've got too many things that we have to do. We got husbands to take care of, kids, job, home, all those things. And then to have the the other part of being, of being, having cancer. That's just another job that we got to take care of. Send them to the intimacy clinic. Allow them to be able to let their hair down, rant and rave, cuss, fuss, so that when they walk out that door, they're able to say, I'm better now. I'm gonna, I've survived this. Now, what is my job from this forward, you know, this day forward? We need womanhood. We can't get along without it. We can't do what we're supposed to do. This would be the mothers and the wives and the teachers and the nurses. So that's what Dr. Hayes was for me. And hopefully she'll be that way for other women as well.